As you all know, I love my KX3. And uh, as I mentioned in, in my last video comparing the KX3 to the Yaesu FTDX10, I have had KX3 now three times. So I, I guess I never learned. I bought one new and I sold it, and I bought a used one and I sold it, and I bought a used one again. So this time I will never sell it, as I probably said before. So, but before I go further, please hit that subscribe button and click the like if you want for, for the algorithms and um, I would just really appreciate that if you do that. So, today we're going to look at speakers for the KX3 and, um, and I have been looking for speakers since my first KX3. Uh, first, I, first thing I do after I've been using it for a bit is to start googling uh, what's the best speaker for Elecraft KX3. And uh, I think I might have found it. I just hope it will be available for a while because as I have, as probably others too have found out, not many speakers these days have auxiliary input. And that's a pain in the ass. Um, so I have found three different options. They're all currently uh, available and uh, I will tell you which one I like best. So please stand by. All right, so first first off is this Marshall speaker, and it's not very portable. It's a big speaker. What's this one called? It's a Marshall, uh, yeah, I can't remember. It's Marshall Stockwell 2 is what this one is called. And by the way, this review is not sponsored by anyone. It's not sponsored by any of the shops or, or speaker makers. It's just a review I do to to tell you which speaker I like best of what I have found. So this is the Marshall speaker. It's uh, it sounds very good. It's not very portable as I mentioned, but you can use it in the shack. I have been using it in the shack and it is a bit of a pain in the butt. It by far sounds the best if you go by bass and volume and, and things like that. Uh, but it does have uh, auxiliary input as you can see right here if my camera is focusing and uh, that's the reason I'm using this. So you can you can just turn it on. It has a it has a, a bass and treble controls and has a volume, uh, and it clicks to turn it on. And the battery, I think it lasts for ten hours or is it, was it twenty hours? It lasts for a ridiculous long time. So you can easily bring this in your uh, RV or cottage or something like that you don't have to worry about charging it all the time so so that's good and if you forget to turn it off it will turn off by itself anyway so uh, so that's no problem but one of the pro issues i have with this is that when you when you plug it in um you have to or, or when you first plug it in it will go to the auxiliary input but then it will start searching for the last Bluetooth source you had connected to it. So the audio goes away for a bit and comes back and then it goes about a minute and then it goes away and it comes back again. So to to solve that, you have to push this button, which is actually for sur for going to Bluetooth and then you go to Bluetooth and then go back to auxiliary and then it will stay on auxiliary. So that works. Uh, one of the things that's irritating with this speaker is that when you turn the volume down on the radio for a bit, the speaker will turn off and to get this back on again it's not just to turn the speaker on you have to unplug it and uh, sort of start from scratch and plug it in again and do that switch back and forth to bluetooth and back to auxiliary and so it's a bit of a pain in the butt to to deal with that so um that's the marshall speaker it works uh but it has it's uh um not so good things with it as well and besides it's not portable at all so then on a recent trip I did to London and as I do uh, and as I do many places I go I go into the electronic shops first thing I do and I start looking for speakers with auxiliary input so I uh, I went uh, traveling through London and I stopped at uh, we, we flew through Stansted and uh, as many of the other larger airports it has an electronic shop so then I start looking for speakers and I found this one this is called uh, in motion in motion it's a small wireless speaker and uh, I picked it up I think it was about 20 pound um, British pound and um, it was not very expensive so I just picked it up I brought it home and uh, to try it <clears throat> so I plugged it in 
I can I can plug it in right now so you can you can hear it. So it has a it has an on button you have to hold in, which I don't like already. There you can hear it turn on. And then it it auto senses when you plug in uh, auxiliary, which is okay. There we go, it's on. Sounds good. It's not that big, it's like a little puck. It's pretty flat, it's very light. It feels solid enough. And like I said, it sounds good, but it's a, bit, a little bit of a hollow sound to it. I can go to single sideband. And back to CW. Yeah, it sounds very good. It's actually not that hollow. It sounds it sounds very good. But then before I went to UK, I put an order in at Amazon. Um, I was searching, I was Googling, and I found one speaker. I was Googling particularly auxiliary input, small loudspeaker, powered light loudspeaker. Because as, as we know, the KX3 needs a powered um, loudspeaker. You can't just put it on the speaker. You have to use headphones or one with a built-in one with a built-in amplifier. So then I found this, this uh, it's called Anchor. And ironically, Anchor in Norwegian means anchor, like a boat anchor. <laughs> but uh, it, this is no boat anchor. This works quite well. This has a very nice solid feel to it. I don't think it's metal, but it's like a hard kind of plastic maybe, or is it metal? I'm not sure, but it feels very metal-ish. And what I really like about it is that it has a real on off button. You can tell when it's off, you can tell when it's on by seeing this light that comes on here. Now it starts to search for Bluetooth, but that doesn't matter. As soon as you plug in auxiliary, it just auto senses and goes there and it will stay there all the time. Uh, so I like the on off button, like I said, and the reason I mentioned that is because this one, um, this one is on now, but unless you look at it at a certain angle, like here, you won't see that light because the light is inside the grid of the speaker, so you won't see it. And if you forget to turn it off, it will drain the battery. Then you have to charge it again, and it takes a bit of time to charge this one. So, um, so that's the disadvantage with this. But I'm very happy I got this anchor um, because it, uh, it works quite well. I can plug it in right now and turn up the volume. Right away, it senses the auxiliary input and it sounds so good. I really like it. It's very, the format is very good. It sits on a table like this beside a radio. It doesn't take much room at all. And I can easily bring this on my motorbike or in the backpack, whatever. And um, of course, what I haven't, what I failed to mention so far is that the KX3 has a built-in speaker, so there's that. But the built-in speaker, as uh, as most KX3 owners probably agree with me, is that it's not that great and it uh, distorts very easily. And uh, and I find it a little, a little harder to copy CW on it if I need to turn up the volume. Like if if I'm in a field somewhere on a soda, uh, then then it might be a little noisy and a little windy and. Uh, the built-in speaker just doesn't cut it, at least not for me. Then again, I'm old, so who knows? It could be just that. So um, that's what I want to say. So if I was to, to buy a speaker again, no doubt I would go for this Anchor. And uh, again, um, so I hope this, this could be helpful for someone. And uh, I will put a link to this one in the description. And like I said, it's just something I found on Amazon. I'm not sure how long it will be available or how many places you can find it, but uh, at least there should be a good chance you can, you can get it. Okay, that's all I want to say. Um, happy CWing and DXing and whatever you do. And, uh, and uh, I'm gonna start making dinner for the family. So best 73s to everyone. And again, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already. Take care.